Welcome to C Programming Tutorials. This is a production of YouTube channel Learnorama and the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Def. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate that you do that so that you can be notified of uh, uh, any new tutorials that I post. And I would also appreciate if you could become the fan of the Facebook page Awesome C Programming Tutorials in High Def. Um, today's tutorial we are going to see why you cannot uh, return uh, the pointers to the local variables um, of a function okay and why that's a big no-no you cannot you just cannot do that okay and in the previous tutorial we basically learned about stack what stacks are and how they are used in function calls okay so we learned that stack is anything basically uh, a data structure that actually represents the last and first out principle which means anything that in that in that it's if the, if if the data is uh, coming in in the order in in such a way that that you know the way it's coming in it it can it is pulled out in the reverse order the last data that came in is the first one that's pulled out then we say that that data is basically following uh, uh, LIFO principle, last and first out principle, and um, and basically we implement it in the form of stack. So we also saw that the stack, the the way functions are called, main is our very first function. It calls some function, suppose you know, func one, right, and then that function called func two. Okay, and then this function called func three. Okay, let's uh, let's imagine, and then these functions are basically they return back, right, one after the other, right, and since the last function that was called is the first function that returns back, and these functions cannot return unless you know the functions which were called after it, they basically are finished, you know, they return first. That it means that the last function that that was called is the first function which is which has to return then this function calling is actually following the last and first out principle right now main function can basically remember it called this func1 then func1 called func2 then func2 called func3 and then we it went back now after that the main function could potentially call another function right uh, i don't know g1 okay and then g1 could call another function g2 okay and so on right and then suppose g2 just returned back and then g1 returned back and we came back to main function okay now look at look at the way now suppose func1 has a variable called uh, integer f1 right func2 has a variable called integer f2 and func3 has a variable called integer f3 and g1 has a variable called uh, I don't know a1 we don't want to call it the same name as the function name that's not gonna be good and g2 has the call as the variable called a2 okay these are the local variables you know the way we define the local variables we already know right we basically these are the variables which are declared right after the braces start of a function like in this this is the main function and we declared them right here these are called local variables so suppose this function has this variable and this function has this way I'm just for example I'm just showing all of them as integer this could be character character type or float type or they could be arrays or they could be you know um, they could be um, uh, structures you know struct variables uh, anything as long as they are inside this func this function, that's what we are talking about. But the v let's look at them. How these variables are created in memory? They actually created on stack, okay? And this is how they look like. That this is the stack, just like the stack of plates, okay? Uh, so this is this is the first way first function which is called is the main function, right? I should basically let me see if I can raise it. Uh, let's see let me raise this guy here okay um, and let's write 
main outside okay and this main function does not have any local variable so that's fine okay now func1 when func1 is called the stack this is the stack this is the stack is basically the part of memory which is allocated for the use of the local variables to create the local variables on okay this memory locations these memory locations are going to be used for these local variables okay now when it calls func1 what happens is that a piece of the stack right after ma main where main ends that piece is actually allocated for this function func1 and inside it we will have one variable called f1 okay this enough memory will be enough to basically hold f1 plus it's also going to hold any parameters that this function might have so we will allocate a space for that also so this whole thing is called a stack frame okay and this stack frame basically is for this particular function f1 uh, function func1 and this func1 is actually is the space for this function func1 is created right after the space for main and when this func1 calls func2 what happens is that on the top of the stack just like we were like putting plates on top of each, each other the next plate which is basically the the stack frame for this function is going to be created right on top of f1 uh, of func1 stack frame this is func2 okay and inside it there is a variable f2 and if there are any other variables they will be created here also and if there are there are parameters they will be created here and remember this size could be totally different from this size because depending upon how many local variables are defined in func2 similarly then func2 calls func3 so a frame is created by for func3 here on stack okay and the variable f3 in it and plus any parameters here and other any other variable as well but when func3 returns what happens when func3 returns this memory is freed up as if it was never used before okay so this whole thing frees up okay and then func2 executes and then func2 finishes right and then func1 finishes so func1 will finish and then we will be we will have main function when main function finishes the program ends so main function never finishes until the end of the program the point is that after func1 look at what's happening here when func1 completes g1 is called by main so what's going to happen where do you think the value where the memory for g1 this integer variable a1 is going to be allocated for it's going to be created on the top of stack every new function call it the variable va variables are allocated from the top of the stack what is the top of the stack right now right here in the main okay so we will create g1 a space for g1 here okay and the variable name a1 is going to be used here and then this g1 is going to use variable a1 and it's going to change the value of a1 and all this stuff now remember before this func1 was located here also so the variable f1 was pretty much located at the same location as f a1 now f1 does not even exist because this function has already returned now a1 exists the value of f1 is not guaranteed to be there okay a1 could overwrite very easily right and similarly when g2 is going to be called it's going to be using possibly the value the 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 space that was used before for func2 and the a2 will be probably created right on top of where f2 was create was there okay and so on so i'm going to stop here and i'll continue this tutorial in the next video so keep watching. Thank you.